I welcome everyone to our Bible study tonight in Jesus' name. For those who are coming for the first time, it's going to be a wonderful experience for you. Unforgettable experience. And for those who have been coming before, it's going to be a time of renewal for everyone. Give me a good, good amen. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the Bible study. We came to listen to you tonight for you to reveal your mind, your heart to us. And we're asking, O oh Lord, that nobody will miss the revelation you are giving tonight in Jesus' name. Yeah. We pray that the word will profit everyone, yeah. benefit everyone. Yeah. And we pray we'll never be the same again in Jesus' name. Yeah. Help us to be wise. Yeah. Wise about our salvation. Yeah. Wise about our destiny. Why is about our relationship with you? Help us, Lord, to take your word serious in our hearts in Jesus' name. Use this time to draw us near unto yourself. In Jesus' name we pray. We're looking at John chapter 17 tonight. We'll study chapter 17, but we are... Now going over some verses that are very, very essential, we shouldn't overlook. Actually, the chapter highlights an important subject, a great revelation which must not be overlooked by anyone. Man is so occupied with things on earth, earthly things, that we forget about heaven and heavenly treasures. But we need to understand that heaven is so important, heaven is so precious, heaven is so real, and this passage talks about heaven. And we don't want to miss that, even though we've gone through what it teaches on the supplication of Christ, the prayer of Christ, the intercession of Christ, the sanctification of the believer, and the real experience, the evidence of that experience. But now we're looking at these selected verses tonight. I'm reading from verse 1. John chapter 17 verse 1. These will speak Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son that thy son may glorify thee. Come to verse 5. And now, O Father, glorify thou me that with thine own self or the glory which I had was thee before the world was. You see, it's going, be, it's going beyond now, behind or before the time the world was created. Look at verse 8. In verse 8, for I have given unto them the words which thou hast givest me, and they have received them, and they have known that surely I came from thee. He came from somewhere. He came from heaven. And then it says, And they have believed that thou didst send me. Look at verse 11. And now I am no more in the world. He's still alive. And he's still saying, I'll not be in the world uh, for some time now. And it says, But these are in the world. And I come to thee. That's heaven right there. I come to thee. He was going to the Father in heaven. Holy Father. Keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are one. Look at verse 13. And now come I to thee. We shouldn't miss this. That is talking about heaven. It's being on earth. And it says now my time on earth is over. I says now I come to thee. And these things I speak in the world that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. Look at verse 24. In verse 24, Father, I will, I desire that they also, whom thou hast given me, be with me where I am. You see that? It's going to heaven. And you say, Father, I want my disciples, I want my followers, I want the people you have given to me to be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory. There's glory in heaven. 
and his wonder in heaven, the splendor in heaven. And he says, They will behold my glory which thou hast given me, for thou lovedst me before the foundation of the world. Tonight we're looking at the message, Christ's revelation of return to the Father in heaven. He reveals to the disciples and is revealing to you and revealing to me that he's returning to the Father in heaven. Christ's revelation of return to the Father in heaven. When we talk about God, God is eternal and his dwelling place is heaven. When we talk about the Lord Jesus Christ, Christ is eternal and he lived in heaven with God before he came to this world to save us. We're talking about heaven. The Holy Spirit is eternal. His eternal abode is heaven. From heaven, he ministers to us here on earth. You're thinking about the angels and the angels since their creation. They have been abiding in God's presence in heaven. There are believers and saints of God who have left this world by death or by rapture. In the case of Enoch, in the case of Elijah, these saints of God, after death or after being taken away from this world, they went to live with a Redeemer forever in heaven. Heaven is the dwelling place of the Almighty God. We need to understand that. Look at 1 Kings chapter 8. I'm reading from verse 30. 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 30. And register this in your mind. Underline this in your Bible. And let this be in your memory indelible that heaven is the dwelling place of the Almighty God, the dwelling place of Christ, the dwelling place of the Holy Ghost, the dwelling place of the angels, and the dwelling place of the saints on high. First Kings chapter 8. I'm reading from verse 30. And hacking thou to the supplication of thy servant and of thy people Israel, when they shall pray toward this place, and hear thou, look at this, hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place. Hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place, and when thou hearest, forgive. And so the word of God affirms that heaven is the dwelling place of the Almighty God. Hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place. We're looking at some two, and I'm reading from verse 4. Some two, we're looking at verse 4. It says, He that sitteth in the heavens shall love, the Lord shall have them in derision. That emphasizes that God dwells in heaven. He inhabits heaven, he seated in heaven, his throne is in heaven. And then in Psalm 73, reading from verse 25. Psalm 73, reading from verse 25. It says, Whom have I in heaven but thee? God is in heaven. The Almighty is in heaven. The Most High is in heaven. Who am, whom have I in heaven but thee? And there is none upon earth that I desire beside thee. We're looking at Psalm 123, verse 1. Psalm 123, and we're reading from verse 1. Still emphasizing for us and still revealing to us that heaven is the place of abode. Heaven is the dwelling place of the Almighty God. Psalm 1, 2, 3, verse 1, it says, Unto thee lift I up mine eyes, O thou that dwellest in the heavens. You, have, you live in heaven. It tells us in Ecclesiastes chapter 5, Ecclesiastes chapter 5, reading from verse 2. Ecclesiastes chapter 5, reading from verse 2. It says, Be not rash with thy mouth, and let not thy heart be hasty to utter anything before God. Look at this. For God is where? In heaven. God is in heaven. Let there be no doubt in your heart. We we'll say, Our Father, which art in heaven, is our God. And you live on earth, but he lives in heaven. Heaven is the dwelling place of the Almighty God. For God is in heaven, and thou upon earth. Therefore, let thy words be few. It tells us in Jeremiah chapter 23. Jeremiah 
chapter 23. Here we're reading from verse 24. And the word of God makes it clear there should be no shadow of doubt in any heart. There is heaven. And that is the place Jesus Christ said he was going. Jeremiah chapter 23 and verse 24. Can any hide himself in secret places that I shall not see, says the Lord? Do not I feel heaven and earth? You see how he brings heaven and earth together? If earth is real, then heaven is real. If earth is a place where people live, then heaven is a place where God and the angels and the saints, where they live. It says, do not I feel heaven and earth, says the Lord. And then we come to the New Testament now. We'll be reading the Old Testament, giving us assurance and giving us revelation. There is a place called heaven. And when a saint of God dies on earth here, he goes to that place that is called heaven. Matthew chapter 6, we're reading from verse 9. Matthew chapter 6, verse 9. After this manner, therefore, pray ye, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Jesus gave the assurance that God the Father, God, our heavenly Father, lives in heaven. A Father which art in heaven. We're coming to Acts of the Apostles, chapter 7. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 7. I read from verse 49. Acts, chapter 7. Reading from verse 49. Look at what it says. Heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. What house will ye build me, says the Lord? God says, heaven is my throne, is my dwelling place, is where I have my majesty, my honor, my glory, my splendor, and that is where I have my throne. Before Stephen died, before Stephen was stoned, while they were discussing with him, look at verse 55 of that Acts chapter 7, Verse 55, but he being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven and he saw the glory of God. He saw the glory of God. I pray you'll see the glory of God. And Jesus standing on the right hand of God. He saw God. He saw Jesus, the Savior. Jesus, the Redeemer. Jesus, our Sanctifier. Jesus, the perfect and the final sacrifice. He saw Jesus on the right hand of God. And then he says, and he said, Behold, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Welcome to Second Corinthians chapter 5. Second Corinthians chapter 5, I'm reading from verse 1. There should be no doubt in your heart. There's a place called heaven, and it is the dwelling place of God. There's a place called heaven, and that is where Jesus said he was going. There's a place called heaven. That's the place from where he said, I will send the Holy Ghost, the Comforter, unto you. There's a place called heaven. That's where Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, where David and the patriarchs of old, where the prophet of all where they have gone there's a place called heaven that's a place is going to prepare for us as well in second corinthians chapter 5 i'm reading from verse 1 it says for we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved we have a building of god and house not made with hands eternal in the heavens, eternal in the heavens. Talking about heaven, it's not like earth, which will be folded up some someday, and which will be burnt up someday, which will be taken out of place someday. But this is eternal, eternal in the heavens. In verse two, for in this we grow, earnestly desiring to be closed upon with our house, which is from where. From heaven. And then you come to verse 6. It says, Therefore, we're always confident, knowing that once we're at home in the body, when we're still alive, like you are sitting there or standing there tonight, you're at home, your spirit, your soul is at home in the body. We're absent from the Lord. That is, he is in heaven, we are on earth, and we're absent from the Lord. Look at this in verse 8. We're confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body 
and to be present with the Lord. The moment a child of God dies, the moment a saint dies, a righteous man, the moment somebody is born again when he dies and the spirit leaves the body, absent from the body, but to and to be present with the Lord. We come to Second Corinthians chapter twelve, and I read from verse one. Second Corinthians chapter twelve, reading from verse one. It is not expedient for me, doubtless, to glory or to boast. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. I knew a man in Christ above fourteen years, beyond beyond fourteen years ago. Whether in the body I cannot tell, or whether out of the body I cannot tell, God knoweth. Such and one caught up to the third heaven. You see that Paul the Apostle here is saying, I had the revelation. I don't know whether my body and soul and spirit, everything transported to the third heaven, or whether my body was here on earth and then my spirit, my soul just went up there. But I know that I was caught up. To the third heaven in verse 3 and I knew such a man is talking this is a just is reporting something about himself but he's uh, using this kind of language talking the, talking the third person and I knew such a man whether in the body or out of the body I cannot tell God knoweth how he was caught up into paradise that's another name for heaven he was caught up into paradise and he heard unspeakable words which it is not lawful for a man to utter that is like he didn't have the language to be able to tell the people all the beauties and all the glories of heaven the place is so beautiful you'll discover when you get over there uh, Philippians chapter 3 in Philippians chapter 3 I'm reading from verse 20 Philippians chapter 3 reading from verse 20 it says for our conversation is in heaven from whence also we look for the Savior the Lord Jesus Christ our mind is in heaven a life in heaven, a, a perspective in heaven, a passion in a manner of life. Citizenship is in heaven for our conversation. Our citizenship is in heaven from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change a vile body that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself he will do it in jesus name now we come to hebrews chapter 8 hebrews chapter 8 look at verse 1 here hebrews chapter 8 verse 1 now of the things which we have spoken this is the psalm this is the summary it says of the things we're revealing of the things we're learning of the things we're hearing this is the sum the summary we have such an high priest who is set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty where in the heavens in the heavens from the old testament and the new testament and from the gospels from the epistles everywhere is telling us there is heaven jesus spoke about heaven the angels spoke about heaven the apostles and the prophets spoke about heaven heaven is a real place look at chapter 12 of hebrews hebrews chapter 12 and i'm reading here from verse 22 hebrews chapter 12 reading from verse 22 it says in verse 22 but she are come unto mount zion and unto the city of the living god the heavenly Jerusalem and to an innumerable company of angels is saying that as we come we're not coming to Mount Sinai we're coming to Zion and it says there is a heavenly Jerusalem to the general assembly and the church of the firstborn which are reaching where in heaven and so there's no doubt there's heaven and Jesus was talking to his own disciples and he's saying I'm going away and should have asked me where I'm going. I came from the Father. I'm going back to the Father. I came from heaven and I'm going back to heaven. It says, uh, reaching in heaven and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of men made perfect. God is in heaven. Jesus is in heaven. The Holy Spirit is in heaven. In the first John chapter 5, 
First John chapter 5, reading from verse 7. First John chapter 5, reading from verse 7. For there are three that bear record. Where are they bearing record? In heaven. There are three that bear record in heaven. The Father in heaven. The Word, that's Jesus in heaven. And the Holy Ghost in heaven. And these three are one. And so that's what Jesus is revealing today. He's revealing about his departure to heaven. And he's revealing about our own participation. About our own being with him in heaven. We're coming back to John chapter 17. John chapter 17. Jesus Christ talking about heaven. And Jesus Christ making a revelation about heaven. And Jesus Christ helping his own disciples to understand if there's any place they should think about, it is heaven. John chapter 17, verse 1. These words speak Jesus when he lifted up his eyes to heaven. He was so eager. He was going there. He was getting ready. He was going there. And he remembered he had been there for more eternity before he came to this world. And now he lifted up his eyes to heaven. And he said, Father, the hour is come. You know, many times uh, Jesus will say, my hour has not come. I still have some things to do. My hour has not come. I still have some lives to touch. My hour has not come. I still have some work and some things I need to finish. But now he said, my hour, the hour hour is come glorify thy son that thy son also may glorify thee and then he began to tell those disciples that were going away he came from somewhere and he's going back to that place he came from verse 11 and now i am no more in the world but these are in the world and i come to thee I come to thee, going to heaven, going to heaven, I come to thee, look at verse 13, and now come I to thee, going to heaven, but not just that I was going to heaven, look at uh, verse 24 now, in verse 24, Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am, you will not be in this world forever, or do you want to be in this world forever? No, we want to go to heaven. And Jesus said, uh, where he's going, he's going to heaven. I will see that. They do it in place of God. And he says, I want my disciples so that where I am, there they will be also to behold my glory. The teaching tonight centers on Christ's revelation of return to the Father in heaven. There are three things we're looking at. Number one, the departure of the only begotten Son to heaven the departure of the only begotten son to heaven point number two the destiny of obedient sons in heaven the destiny of obedient sons in heaven number three the dedication of overcoming saints for heaven the dedication the devotion the commitment the pursuit the passion that we know there is heaven and it is for the saints of God and it is for those who overcome the dedication then the commitment of overcoming saints for heaven number one the departure of the only begotten son to heaven you remember that Jesus Christ is referred to as the only begotten son of God so when we talk about the departure of the only begotten son we're talking about the Lord Jesus Christ come to John chapter 1 John chapter 1 reading from verse 18 John chapter 1 I'm reading from verse 18 no man has seen God at any time the only begotten son that's Jesus the only begotten son which is in the bosom of the father he has declared him Jesus is referred to as the only begotten son look at John chapter 3 John chapter 3 reading from verse 16 for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son again that's Jesus that's the title that he had. The father called him his beloved son, his only begotten son. It says uh, he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. I pray you believe. 
and you will not perish and you have everlasting life in jesus name we're looking at uh, we're looking at some two we're looking at some two here and in verse two it tells us still talking about jesus christ it says in verse six and uh, look at this uh, chapter two of the psalms in verse six yet have i set my king upon my holy hill of zion i will declare the decree the lord hath said unto me thou art my son this day have i begotten thee and so when we're talking about the only begotten son we're talking about jesus christ and this the first section of the study talks about the departure that was leaving this world come back now to john chapter 17 john chapter 17 the departure of the only begotten son to heaven in john chapter 17 verse 1 this word speak jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said father the hour is come glorify that glorify thy son that thy son also may glorify thee come to verse 5 and now O father glorify thou me with thine own self with the glory which i had with thee before the world began before the creation of the world christ had been in existence and before anything was created at all christ was there because he's eternal and he says now glorify me with the glory which i had with you before the beginning of the world it tells us in verse 11 and now i am no more in the world but these are in the world and i come to thee i come to thee he knew the time had come he knew the time had arrived when he christ the only begotten son will go back to the father and what a blessed reunion that will be that jesus had left heaven he had come to this world so that he will give his life for redemption for salvation but now that was going to finish that work he says i come to thee holy father keep through thine own name those whom thou has given me that day may be one as we are one verse 13 and now come i to thee come i to thee he knew where he was going and was going to the father this wasn't the first time he was going to he was saying that he was departing from this world come to john chapter 13 john chapter 13 i'm reading from verse 1 it says now before the feast of the passover when jesus knew that his hour was come that he should depart from this world unto the father you see that he knew that his hour had come and it's wonderful when you can tell the hours come to live here and then to go to the next place he knew that his hour had come that he would depart out of this world and then go on to the father having loved his own which were in the world he loved them unto the end look at verse 3 and jesus knowing that the father had given all things into his hands and that he was come from the father from god and went to god he came from god and was going back unto god when he came to this world he came from heaven he came from the father and now that the time has come you slept he's finished everything he was doing here he was going back to god and was going to the father come to chapter 16 john chapter 16 we're looking at verse 7 there was so much assurance and it was so definite that jesus christ he came here to do something and what he came to do he had finished and finalized and because of that now that that work had been done he was now going back unto the father in john chapter 16 verse 7 john 16 verse 7 it says nevertheless i tell you the truth it is expedient for you that i go away he was going away going from the earth and now we know where he was going where was he going he was going to heaven for if i go not away the comforter will not come unto you but if i depart the departure of the only begotten son if i depart i will send him 
unto you. You understand the implication of that? He is in heaven as a father is in heaven. I am going to the father in heaven. When I get to heaven, I'll send the Holy Spirit from heaven and send him unto you. When did that happen? When did he get to heaven? You know that after this was betrayed. After this was crucified. And then he died for our sins. And after that death was buried. And on the third day, what happened? He rose from the dead. Look at it now. John chapter 20. John chapter 20. Uh, going to heaven. The time he went to heaven. And how he went to heaven. Because for the, for the to start with, he died for our sins. In John chapter 20 verse 1. The first day of the week. Come at Mary Magdalene early, when it was yet dark, into the sepulchre, and seeth the stone rolled away from the sepulchre. That means Jesus Christ had risen from the dead. Then she, she runneth uh, to, and cometh to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and said unto them, They have taken away the Lord out of the sepulchre. And we know not where they have laid him. Peter therefore went forth and that other disciple and came to the sepulchre. So they ran both together and the other disciple did outrun Peter and came forth to the sepulchre. And he stooping down and looking in saw the linen clothes uh, lying, yet went he not in. Then Peter, then came Simon Peter, following him, uh, and went into the sepulchre and set the linen, cl the linen clothes lying. And the napkin uh, that was about his sedge, not lying uh, with the linen clothes, but wrapped together in a place by itself. Then went in also the other disciple, which came first to the sepulchre, and he saw and believed that Christ was not there. The tomb was empty. Only the linen clothes were there, because Jesus Christ had risen from the dead, for, ye, for as yet they knew not the scripture, that he must rise again from the dead. Then the disciples went away again on, unto their own home. But Mary stood without a sepulchre weeping, and as she went, she stooped down and looked into the sepulchre. She must see Jesus Christ. You must see Jesus Christ. The others have led without seeing him, but she was passionate about this. Look at verse 12. And see two angels in a white sitting, the one at the head and the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had lain. And they say unto her, woman, why weepest thou? She said unto them, because they have taken away my Lord, and I know not where they have laid him. And when he had thus said, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing, and knew not that it was Jesus. Jesus says unto her, woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? She is supposing him to be the gardener, says unto him, Sir, if thou have borne him hence, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said unto her, Mary. She taught herself, and she said unto him, Rabboni, the Lord will mention your name. Which is to say, Master, but look at this. This is what we're looking for. Look at this, verse 17. Jesus says unto her, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my Father, but go tell my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my Father and your Father and to my God and your God. After he rose from the dead, that's when he went to heaven, and he went to be in heaven with the Father. Come to Acts of the Apostles chapter 1. Acts of the Apostles chapter 1, I'm reading here from verse 9. Acts of the Apostles chapter 1, verse 9. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward where? Where did he go? 
heaven as he went up behold two men two angels actually stood by them in white apparel which also said ye men of galilee why stand ye gazing up into where into heaven this same jesus which is taken from you into where into heaven shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into where into heaven the angel said he went to heaven jesus said he was going to heaven thank god he went to heaven and he's gone to prepare a place for you and when he has gone and when he has finished preparing the place for you he will come again and he will come for you okay he will come for me it'll come for you in jesus name the lord jesus christ the only begotten son of god came from heaven and was going back to heaven the father had sent him to the earth for a purpose what for, for what purpose the father sent the lord jesus christ number one to reveal the truth that saves that's what he came to do and he's finished that number two it was to seek and to save the lost world the world was lost lost in sin lost in darkness lost in degradation lost in their guilt and lost in condemnation and jesus came to seek and to save the lost world number three to sacrifice and pay the price for our redemption that's what he came to do yes he healed the sick he opened the eyes of the blind he raised the dead but the climax of what he came to do he came to sacrifice and pay the price for redemption number four he came to bring many sons to glory he wanted to take us away from the fall and take us away from our sin and bring us to glory number five it was to convey the love of god to sinful humanity to convey the love of god because people did know, did not know that god so loved the world that he would give his only begotten son and jesus came to convey the love of god to sinful humanity number six to grant us grace mercy and salvation as we repent as we turn to the lord he came to say god has forgiven us and then he gave that forgiveness on the on behalf of his father number seven to raise ambassadors and representatives who will continue like him to the end of the world because if you only save the people at that time and then the rest of us were not hearing the gospel what will be our lord and what will be our destiny therefore he came to raise up ambassadors and representatives uh, that will continue the work that he had begun and now that he had done that major part and the only thing that remained now was for him to die on the cross he was now ready to go come back to john chapter 17 john chapter 17 it says in verse 4 john chapter 17 verse 4 i have glorified thee on the earth i have finished thy the work which thou gavest me to do and now that i've finished all that that i told you now that's why i said haven't finished that he was ready to go back to the father ready to go back to heaven and to heaven he went and when he went to heaven, he sat on the right hand of majesty on high. Don't miss that. Look at Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16. I'm reading from verse 19. Mark chapter 16 verse 19. He went to heaven, not just anywhere in heaven, to the right hand side of the Father. Mark chapter 16 verse 19. So then, after the Lord had spoken to them, he was received up into where heaven and sat on the right hand of god that's his place that's his place you'll have your place when you go there it says in luke chapter 24 luke chapter 24 where christ went he went to heaven luke chapter 24 i'm reading from verse 50 and he led them out as far as best to bethany and he lifted up his hands and blessed them look at this and it came to pass while he blessed them he parted he was parted from them and carried where up into heaven carried up into heaven and that is where he is now hebrews chapter one hebrews chapter one thank god my jesus is in heaven 
my savior is in heaven my redeemer is in heaven he said that's where i was going and i was carried into heaven look at hebrews chapter 1 verse 3 hebrews chapter 1 verse 3 who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power when he had by himself purged our sins sat down on the right hand of majesty on high he's in heaven chapter 4 hebrews chapter 4 we're looking at verse 14 hebrews chapter 4 reading from verse 14 seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens we have a great high priest and is passed into the heavens jesus the son of god let us hold fast our profession because we are going there too Hebrews chapter 9, Hebrews chapter 9, verse 24. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 24. For Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands, which are figures of the true, but into heaven itself. Is entered into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. First Peter chapter 3. Verse 22, First Peter chapter 3, verse 22. First Peter, which chapter are you looking for? What verse do you want to read? Chapter 3, verse 22, who is gone into, tell me, heaven. Thank God is in heaven. You cannot miss it. He said he was going to heaven. Where did he go? He got to heaven. And he will give you the grace to get there too who is gone into heaven and is on the right hand side, right hand of God. Angels and authorities and powers being made subject unto him. We come to point number two now and we're coming to John chapter 17. John chapter 17 is so uplifting and it's so wonderful to know and to remember that Jesus has gone into heaven but then he said something about this heaven about the place was going to point number two the destiny of obedient sons in heaven the destiny our destiny is in heaven your destiny is in heaven I can almost picture you entering those pearly gates. I can picture you sitting down by the side of the Lord Jesus Christ. What a wonderful day that will be that where he is, there you will be also. That's why you are saved. That's why you are born again. And that's why you are sanctified. That's why you are studying the Bible. Who wants to just study the Bible and then know about heaven? And then the time comes and then we are not there. Thank God you will be there. And thank God I'll be there too. Your joy will not be full if you are there, if I'm not there. And my joy will not be full if I'm there and you are not there. You'll be there, I'll be there. Look at John, look at John. John chapter 17, we're looking at verse 24. Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am. What do you see now? in heaven it says that those who have given to me and those who have turned away from their sin and they have come to know the lord as their personal savior that they will be with me where i am that they may behold my glory which thou hast given me for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world and that's not the first time you'll say something like that look at this chapter 12 john chapter 12 we're reading from verse 23 john chapter 12 reading from verse 23 it says and jesus answered them saying the hour is come that the son of man shall be glorified verily verily i say unto you except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die it abideth alone but if it die it bring it bringeth forth much fruit looks like your life is going to be fruitful your ministry will be fruitful and what you do for the lord will be fruitful in jesus name look at verse 25 he that loveth his life shall lose it that he is the one that is over protecting his life 
I don't want to go there, it's raining. I don't want to go out, the sun is too much. I don't want to go there, it's dark. I don't want to evangelize, I don't want to do anything. He's over protecting himself. And he says, he that loveth his life, over protecting himself, shall lose it. And he that hateth his life, the one that says, I'm going to throw out my life for the salvation of humanity in this world, shall keep it unto life eternal. Verse 26, look at, don't miss this one. If any man serve me, who is that? You see here tonight? If any man, any woman serve me, let him follow me. Look at this. And where I am, there shall also my servant be. See that? It's in heaven. And it says you will be in heaven. It says, there shall my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. We're coming to chapter 14. John chapter 14. I'm reading from verse 1. John chapter 14 from verse 1. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God. Do you believe in God? Believe also in me. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. He's your savior. He's your sanctifier. He is your all in all. He's the one that supplies all your needs spiritually and physically, materially. In my father's house are many mansions. In my father's house are many mansions. And it will go around. For all the people who are saved, it will go around. And for all the people who are obedient to the Lord, it will go around. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for me. Put your name there. I go to prepare a place for He has got to prepare a place for you. I'm sure you are eager to go there. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. I will come again. Look at this. And receive you unto myself. That where I am, where I am, there ye may be also. You know, there are some people, they're religious people, traditionally religious people, and they go about houses knocking at doors, knocking at doors, and they say, buy this one, buy this literature. And then when you say, what's there? They say, it will show you how you are going to live on this earth forever and ever. As I take that one away, who wants to live on the dusty earth forever and ever? Where do you want to live forever? Somebody comes to you by selling something and selling something and say, read this one, read this one. It will show you that, you know, after Armageddon and this and that, then you are going to stay here. Look at all the houses around. Which one do you like to stay forever? I said, which one do you want to stay forever? But it's a place in heaven that Christ has gone to prepare. He's gone to prepare for, for me. And he says, where I am, there you will be also. Nothing will take you away from that place. But you know, it is for obedient sons, obedient sons. Look at verse 15. If he love me, keep my commandments. Look at verse 24. In verse 24, it says, He that loveth me not, keepeth not my sins. That is, the people who are not keeping the sins of Christ, and they are not born again, they are not living obedient, righteous lives, they are not going there, but thank God you are going there. He that loveth me not, keepeth not my sins, and the word which ye hear is not mine, but the Father which sent me. Look at verse 20. Ye have heard how I said unto you, I go away and come again unto you. If ye love me, ye would rejoice because I said, I go unto the Father, for my Father is greater than I. He's going to prepare a place for us. First John, First John chapter 3. In 1 John chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 1. 1 John chapter 3, we're reading from verse 1. It says, Beloved, behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us. Personal, behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon you, that we shall be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. When are you sons of God? When are you daughters of God? 
Now this time, by salvation, you turn away from sin. You believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. He forgives you. He cleanses you. He sets you free. And the Spirit of God bears witness in your heart. You are a child of God. Some people say, we cannot tell that we are children of God until we die and go to the great beyond. That's too late. That's too late. The time to have assurance is now. He forgives our sins. He cleanses us from all sin. He gives us his grace. He makes us to live righteous lives. And he says, Beloved, now are we the sons of God. And he does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know. I know. I said, I know. There's assurance in salvation. There's assurance in the grace of God. When your sins are forgiven, when he gives you the grace of God, there's assurance that we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. I think uh, these are verses you must make personal. When he shall appear, I shall be like him. When he shall appear, say that again. For we shall see him as he is. Anytime you have trial, anytime you have temptation, anytime you have some confusion, anytime you have some uphill task, and it appears that things are tough and things are hard, and the devil wants to say, look at you now, look at your challenge now, you say, I know things are going to change. Because when he shall appear, think about that, I'm going to be like him. Sister, did you hear that? You are going to be like him. My brother, don't drop your head. Don't, don't, don't be so sorrowful because it is not the way you are now that you'll be at that time. When he shall appear, you will be like him. The angels will see you and they will rejoice. But look at verse 3. Look at verse 3. And every man that has this hope in him, what does he do? Purify himself even as... But you know, there are people, they excuse sin. They excuse shortcoming. They excuse, you know, as some kind of bad behavior. They say, after all, David did this. Forget about that. After all, Abraham told uh, this. Forget about that. After all, look at uh, Aaron. Look at what he did. But thank God, you are not measured by the purity, by the lifestyle, by the holiness of Aaron or Abraham or David. Who are you measured with? Jesus, every man that has this hope in him purifies himself. Tell me, even as he is pure. We're coming to uh, for, we're coming to uh, this uh, passage now that talks about what we have to be as obedient children. First Peter, First Peter chapter one. In First Peter chapter one, I'm reading from verse two. First Peter chapter one, reading from verse two. Elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through sanctification of the Spirit unto obedience that's it that's what he calls us to that's what he wants us to be unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of jesus christ grace unto you and peace be multiplied blessed be the god and father of our lord jesus christ look at this which according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again born again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, and that fadeth not away. Tell me the rest of that verse. Reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God. He will keep you. He will keep you faithful. Keep you strong. You will not fall. No temptation will come to you that will make you fall. Yeah. Every temptation that comes will give you the grace you will overcome. Yeah. Who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. And look at uh, verse 14. Look at the kind of people he's talking to. He says in verse 14, as what kind of children? Yeah. What kind of child are you? As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former laws in your ignorance, but as he which has called you is holy. 
as he which has called you is holy as he himself who has called you is holy so be ye holy in all manner of conversation because it is routine tell me be ye holy for i am holy you see the father and the son in heaven desire all true children of god that will be in heaven uh, that will be in heaven forever and the true sons of god and the true daughters of god are born again believers and these born again believers number one they abide in the truth they're not people that play with lies and they play with deception and they play with disobedience and play with transgression number one they abide in the truth number two they live in the truth they live in the truth truth surrounds them and truth indwells them number three they obey be the truth these are the sons of god who are expecting that when christ comes he'll take them to heaven and they will live in heaven forever with the lord one abiding in the truth truth living in the truth three obeying the truth the truth that concerns your personal life and the truth that concerns your marriage and the truth that concerns the doctrine of the bible and the truth that concerns the way you walk and the truth that concerns righteousness obedience to the lord they are obeying the truth number four the delight in the truth they rejoice in the truth they appreciate the truth they embrace the truth you see somebody who says i'm a child of god but he doesn't like the truth of the bible doesn't delight in the truth of the bible that salvation is doubtful when you are saved when you're a real child of god you delight in the truth and they are spreading the truth you don't just hold the truth hold the truth and keep the truth to yourself you spread the truth and you are defending the truth that's a real child of God, a person that has real conviction and is defending that truth and is holding that truth and is holding forth that truth as well. I come to Philippians uh, chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. I'm reading here from verse 2. Philippians chapter 2. And we're looking at uh, verse 2. It says, Fulfill ye my joy, that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord and of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife and vain glory. These are obedient children of God, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves look not every man on his own things verse 4 but every man also on the things of others that he is a real child of god is not a self-centered child is not a person that is looking at only my advantage only what i like only what i want he wants the profit of others he wants the advantage of others he wants the joy of others in verse 5 let this might be in you which was also in christ jesus who being in the form of God, thought it nobly to be equal with God, but he made himself of no reputation. And he's saying that we are to follow the life of Christ. He that has this hope in him purifies himself, even as Christ is pure. And how pure was Christ? He, he sought for himself no reputation, but he took upon him the form of his servant. And he was made in the likeness of men, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself. You remember what we are to be? If we're going to be obedient sons of God, and we're going to get ready for heaven, he purifies himself even as he is pure, as Christ is pure. And as Christ humbled himself, so we humbled ourselves and he became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name that are the name of Jesus. Tell me out aloud every initial bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth and that every tongue should confess that jesus christ is lord that's your confession i said that's your confession jesus is your lord you'll not go back to idol worship jesus is your lord you'll not go back to the pharisees sadducees jesus is your lord 
you'll not go back to any kind of a personality on earth jesus is your lord to the glory of god the father wherefore wherefore my beloved as she have always always tell me always tell me out aloud you see that's the word of god if we go into heaven and if we have the hope of getting to heaven we always obey here in the area of marriage always obey not unequally yoked together with some believers always obey not fraudulent always obey and living a life that glorifies the lord in holiness and righteousness all the days of your life always obey go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature always obey it says wherefore my beloved my beloved as ye have always obeyed not as in my presence only but now much more in my absence work out your own salvation with fear and trembling for it is god which walketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure do all things how do all things how without murmuring and disputing you know some people if the salvation is real then the life of salvation will flow and there'll be no friction and be no kind of a dispute there'll be no argument you'll do the things you ought to do joyfully i'm doing it to the lord i'm doing it for the lord and because i'm doing it for the lord i may do it and sweat I may do it and, you know, I have to ex exercise some energy. I may do it and spend money. I may do it and spend some extra time. But I have, I'm happy doing the will of God. And you say, doing all things without, tell me once again, murmurings and disputings. Look at verse 15. That she may be blameless and harmless sons of God. They said the obedient sons is coming forth. These are the obedient sons and they're going to spend eternity in heaven. It says that she may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom ye shine as lights in the world. You will shine. In your office will be different. In your place of work, anywhere you find yourself, you'll be different. Your attitude different. Your actions different. Your behavior different. Your lifestyle different. Look at verse 16. Holding forth the word of life, that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. Hebrews chapter 5, these are the people that have the salvation that takes them to heaven, and that salvation, when it takes them to heaven, they'll be there forever and ever. You'll be there forever and ever. Well, we're coming to we're coming to Hebrews chapter five. I'm reading from verse nine. Hebrews chapter five, verse nine. And be made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that do watch. Obey him. Obey him. That's uh, salvation. Uh, people talk about eternal security. But you know, eternal security is only for those who are obeying the Lord all the time. Not for those who backslide. For those who go back into sin, he says, and be made perfect. He became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him nominal believers who are nominal believers those who are believers by name they go to church they have a bible they carry the bible they sing the songs they dress somehow like uh, they are dressing the uniform of their church but they are nominal they don't have real salvation nominal believers nominal uh, church goers they disobey the truth they disobey the truth the truth they ought to abide in the truth they ought to live in they disobey the truth they deny the truth when it comes to you know living the life in their office living the life in their community they deny the truth they disregard the truth any decision they want to take anywhere they want to go anything they want to do any project they want to carry out any business they want to carry out they are only like christians on sunday from monday to saturday they deny the truth they despise the truth despise the truth when you tell them 
them, according to the word of God, they said, I don't, I don't walk by that. I'm looking for money. I don't walk by that. I want to get married. I'm, I don't walk by that. I want to, you know, please uh, myself. These people, they are nominal believers. They are nominal churchgoers. They disobey the truth. They deny the truth. And they disregard the truth. They despise the truth. They depart from the truth. They look like Christians when everything is going well. And when the wind is blowing their direction and everything is going well and people are giving this support and giving this encouragement and all that, they look like Christians. But now, let some trial come. Let some challenge come. Let some correction come. And you'll find them, they depart from the truth. These people, nominal believers, they diminish the truth. The ones that favor them, you say, I agree with that. But the one that contradicts their flesh, their character, their behavior, and their wrong, and their wrong deeds, they will diminish the truth. They say, well, I remove that, I remove that. They are subtracting from the word of God. These are people that disallow the truth. Ah, we're having celebration now. We're having marriage celebration now. We're having naming ceremony now. We're having this. This one is a burial. This one is a particular function. This one don't bring a truth here. Don't bring doctrine here. All the people of the world are going to be like them. They disallow the truth in their decisions. They will not get to heaven. They cannot get to heaven. If disobedience is allowed in heaven, heaven will be like the earth. Heaven will be as dirty, as corrupt as the earth. But the people who are going to get to heaven, they are obedient sons. And thank God I'm one of them. I say thank God I'm one of them. Genuine salvation is what we need. Genuine righteousness is what we need. Genuine obedience to the word of God is what we need. Divine love in our heart is what we need. Holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. God's oppression in our heart that takes away all those, uh, all those uh, sides and issues of sin. Uh, and then we belong to the Lord forever and ever. I'll see you there in Jesus' name. Hey, look at look at Revelation, Revelation chapter twenty-two, Revelation chapter twenty-two, and I'm reading from verse uh, reading from verse fourteen. It says, "Blessed are they that do His commandments." Those are the obedient sons, and they're getting ready to get to heaven. Their destiny and their place, their final place of abode, eternal place of abode, is in heaven. Blessed are they that do His commandments, that they may have a right to the tree of of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. Is that verse your own? Yeah. I said, is that your verse? Yeah. I'm going to read the next verse, but you know, this one, uh, well, I don't know who this one is for. Look at verse 15. For without, outside are the dogs. Are you there? No. Sorcerers? No. Among us? Murderers, no. idolaters, no. and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. No. Ah. No. Verse 14, verse 15, where are you? Which is your verse? No. Look at verse 14. Blessed are they, you are blessed. Yeah. That do his commandments that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. I will be there. Point number three now. Point number three, the dedication of overcoming saints for heaven. Why are we dedicated to the Lord? Why do we dedicate ourselves to the Lord? Because we know it takes that commitment it takes that continuity, it takes that devotion, and it takes that consecration to get to heaven. A person cannot just accidentally get to heaven. It's not serious, but one day he finds himself in heaven. No, not at all. A person cannot just be walking, roaming about, and he says, one day I, I will just find myself in heaven. One day, no. It's a planned thing. It's a prepared place for those who are prepared to get to heaven. We're coming to John chapter 17, the dedication of overcoming saints for heaven.
in uh, John chapter 17 verse 11 and now I, I am no more in the world but these are in the world and I come to thee holy father keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me that they may be one as we are while I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou givest me, I have kept, and none of them is lost. I pray that none of the people in front of me will be lost. And all just listen tonight, anywhere and everywhere, the grace of God will be abundant in your life. You will not be lost in Jesus' name. Look at verse 12. But the son of perdition you'll not be a son of perdition that the scripture might be fulfilled and now come i to thee and these are these things i speak in the world that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves i have given them thy word and the world has hated them because they are not of the world even as i am not of the world I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. He will keep you. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. Not to go and commit sin in the world, but to go and convert the people who are in the world. And he says, and for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Neither pray I for these alone but for them also which shall believe on me through their word that they all may be one as thou father art in me and I in thee that they also may be one in us that the world may believe that thou hast sent me through your life many people in the world will come to believe and the glory which thou gavest me I have given them that they may be one, even as we are one, I in them, and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. Look at this verse now. This is your verse. Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory, which thou hast given me, for thou lovedst me before the foundation of the world. To get to heaven, Jesus Christ has given us what it takes to get to heaven. In John chapter 3, reading from verse 3, John chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 3. It says in verse 3, John chapter 3, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. You must be born again. If you are born again, your life will reflect that new birth. If any man be in Christ, is a new creature. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. Look at verse 5. Jesus answered, Verily, verily I say unto thee, except a man be born of water, that's the word of God, and the Spirit, that's the Holy Ghost, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that it was which was born of the Spirit is spirit. I pray your life will be spiritual. Yeah. Look at Psalm 24. Get into heaven, Psalm 24. There's a dedication. There's a commitment it takes for us to get to heaven. For you, for me, for us to get to heaven. Dedication. Look at uh, chapter 24, Psalm 24, verse 3. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? This is talking about getting to heaven. He that has, what? Clean hands. He doesn't steal. Clean hands. 
it doesn't uh, sign uh, something in the office which it shouldn't sign clean hands and it's not committing abortion clean hands it's not involved in killing or destroying anybody he that has clean hands and a pure heart purified heart that means a sanctified who has not lifted up his soul unto vanity nor sworn deceitfully the lord will purify you and prepare you for heaven in jesus name look at psalm 15 psalm 15 verse 1 lord who shall abide in thy tabernacle who shall dwell in thy holy hill it's talking about high heaven who shall dwell in that heavenly place look at the qualification here look at the commitment look at the character look at the expectation of the lord and look at what the blood of jesus can do he that walketh uprightly and walketh that's in the continuous tense he walketh righteousness he speaketh the truth in his heart these are people getting to heaven and he backbites not with his tongue nor doeth evil to his neighbor nor taketh up a reproach against his neighbor in whose eyes a vile person is contained if a person is bad a person is evil he doesn't praise the bad person so he can get money so he can get uh, whatever it is from that person if a person is unrighteous he doesn't uh, kind of uh, have partnership with that unrighteous person because he's looking for something he knows that the very person is contained but he honors them that fear the lord he that swore it to his own heart and what tell me out aloud and changes not what does that mean you've committed your life to the lord jesus christ and say lord i'll follow you to the end and after you made that decision and you are born again then there's persecution and the persecution is hurting and it's terrible you don't say well i didn't know this will come i didn't know it would be like this but you say i've already told the lord i will serve him to the end and i will serve him to the end somebody there you'll serve him to the end all these little little things that happen they are nothing to worry about the lord will soon take everything away he that swore to his own heart and changeth not he that putteth not out his money to usury nor taketh reward against the innocent he that doeth this thing shall never be moved these are overcoming saints of God, overcoming children of God that are getting ready for heaven. You are an overcomer. Amen. Romans chapter 6, I'm reading from verse 11. Romans chapter 6, and I'm reading from verse 11. In verse 11, it tells us here, those who are overcomers and those who are the saints of God, likewise reckon ye also yourselves dead, to be dead indeed unto sin. Sin will knock at the door, but you will not be at home. Amen. Sin will try to uh, open the door, you will not allow that door to be opened. Amen. And sin will try to come back into your life, it will not happen. Amen. You will stand firm. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, and alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body you'll stand guard you'll say it will not come it will not happen sin will not overcome you let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body that ye should obey it in the laws thereof neither yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin but yield yourselves unto god as those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness unto god for sin shall not have dominion over you Say that for yourself. Say that again. Hey, look at verse 16. Know ye not that whomsoever ye yield yourselves, servants to obey, his servants are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death, of obedience unto righteousness. But God be thanked that though ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered unto you. Verse 18, being made free from sin. Praise the Lord. 
be made free from sin. I said, praise the Lord. This is talking about you. He has made you free. He has set you free. The blood has cleansed and washed you clean. You will not be dirty again. Being made free from sin, you became the servants of righteousness. And let's come to chapter 12, Romans chapter 12, Romans chapter 12. I'm reading from verse 17. Romans chapter 12, verse 17. Recompense to no man evil for evil. That's what brings sin. That's what brings uh, bitterness in their heart. That's what brings hatred. That's what brings hostility again. Uh, that's what brings backsliding. They did that to me. I'll do it to them again. You know what that means? You know, they throw a stone at you and then you throw it back to them. But the person you are throwing it back to is a backslider. It's a sinner. And then you say, you throw that to me. He throws the second one to you again. You say, you throw that to me. You are going to be like him very soon. And then you throw it back again. He says, ah, so you know how to throw stone. And then he throws to you again. And then he goes back and forth, back and forth. But if he throws the first stone and you don't reply, I'll say, God forgive you. God bless you. God give you the taste of Calvary. And he thought you'll be angry, but you are not angry. His hands will go down. Because you have overcome. I see overcomers there. You'll overcome in Jesus' name. Uh, look at verse 17, recompense to no man, no man, no matter who the person is, recompense to no man evil for evil, provide things honest in the sight of all men. If possible, if it be possible, as much as it lies in you, live peaceably with how many people? All men. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves. This is not your home. This is not your kingdom. Don't walk like they walk. Don't talk like they talk. You are going to heaven. I said you are going to heaven. Yes. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves. Brother, that give place unto all. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, you pray, uh huh, is hungry now, you will die of hunger. God will punish you. Is that what it says you should say? No. What should you say? Feed. If an enemy hunger, feed. feed him. If he thirst, feed. give him drink. For in doing so, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Verse 21, everybody, one, two, three, go. Those are the overcoming saints. Those are the people going to heaven. Those are the people before me tonight. Yeah. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. How will that happen? Look at how to make it happen. Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 1. Ephesians chapter 5. And we're reading from verse 1. In Ephesians chapter 5 verse 1, it says, Be ye therefore followers of God as their children. That's how to make that happen. You overcome evil. You overcome sin. You overcome the hatred of the people. You overcome all the bad, bad things in society. And walk in love, not hatred, not retaliation. And walk in love as Christ also has loved us and has given himself for us an offering. And he sacrificed to God for his sweet smelling savor. Look at verse 7. Be not ye therefore partakers with them. The people who are evil, the people who are sinful, don't be like them. Don't act like them. Don't talk like them. Don't say, they did that to me, I'll do it back to them. Never. Somebody that's there say never. Verse 25, husbands love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word that he might present it to himself. What kind of church? A glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. Those are the overcomers, you'll be an overcomer. 
second peter chapter three second peter chapter three i'm reading from verse nine second peter chapter three and we're reading from verse 9. In verse 9, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slack slackness, but is not submit to us word, not willing that any should perish. There's nobody tonight here that God wants to perish. You will not perish. But you see, he says he's not willing that any should perish, but that all shall come to repentance tonight if you have not repented very simple we just say lord i'm sorry for my past i come to you tonight forgive me he's so wonderful he'll forgive you immediately save me he will save you immediately look at verse 10 but the day of the lord will come as he thief in the night in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt with fervent heat and the earth also and the works therein shall be burnt up seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness all the things people are running after today um, that's uh, um, wood and stone and uh, sand and cement and this and that and currency and money and paper whatever everything will be burnt up and when it is burnt up where will you be thank god if you are saved you'll go to heaven and you are waiting for the coming of the Lord. He's going to prepare a place for you. You will not miss it in Jesus' name. Look at verse 12. Look at verse 12. Looking for and hastening unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt to a fervent heat. Nevertheless, nevertheless, we, according to his promise, what are you looking for? Look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, Seeing that she look for such things, be diligent that she may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. Verse 17 Ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before, beware lest ye also be led away with the error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness, but grow in grace. And in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him the glory both now and forevermore. Amen. For those who are going to get to heaven, there's a wide difference between saints and sinners. A clear difference between saints and sinners. A basic fundamental difference between saints and sinners. There is a spiritual difference between saints and sinners. A permanent difference and eternal difference. Sinners are overcome by evil. Sinners are overcome by sin. Sinners are overcome by the flesh. Sinners are overcome by the world and by Satan. But on the other hand, saints overcome. Are they here tonight? I said saints overcome. Are they overcomers here tonight? What do we overcome? Saints overcome temptations and trials. They will come. You will overcome. Amen. Tomorrow, as we go back to the office, remember this study. When temptation comes, do like this, do like this. You say, uh, uh, I am an overcomer. I am a conqueror. So, as a saint, you overcome temptations and trials. You overcome sinfulness and sensuality. It's all over there in the world. You'll see them. But you will overcome in Jesus' name. You overcome hatred and hostility. You know, the people of the world, they're bitter. They're bitter. They're going about, they're pregnant with hatred and hostility. But that thing will never come near you. And the people of the world, they have enticement and allurements of Satan, but you overcome. Defilement and derailment, you overcome. Covetousness and corruption, you overcome. Pollution and perversion, you overcome. Saints go to heaven. Where do sinners go? I said, saints go to heaven. Where do sinners go? Where are you going? Amen. I say, where are you going? I say, amen to that for you. 
How do we overcome? Number one, we overcome by faith. We overcome by faith. Number two, we overcome by the word, the word of our testimony. When Jesus was tempted, he said, it is written. Number three, we overcome by the blood of the Lamb. That's the blood that gave us victory and won the victory for us. And then number four, we overcome by resisting the devil. Resist the devil, he will flee from you. Number five, we overcome by self-denial. Self-denial. You know, something comes and you say, no, I'm not going to do that. Number six, we overcome by grace. Number seven, we overcome by crucifixion. I'm crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the face of the Son of God, who loved me and he died for me. Number eight, we, we overcome by total identification with Christ. He lives in me, and I live in him. I in them, and they in me, that they may be made perfect in one. And as we totally completely identify with the lord we're going to be overcomers Amen. you are going to be overcomers Amen. young you'll overcome Amen. old you'll overcome Amen. new believer you overcome Amen. whoever you are the grace of god is available tonight you overcome in jesus name first john first john chapter 2 i'm reading from verse 14 i've reached unto you fathers because ye have known him that is from the beginning i've reached unto you young men because ye are strong any strong person there today ye are strong and the word of god abideth in you and ye have overcome the world you have overcome the wicked one you overcome in jesus name uh, chapter 4, chapter 4, I'm reading chapter 4, and I'm reading from verse 1. Chapter 4, verse 1, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone into the world. Hereby know ye the spirit of God, Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it shall come even now, already is it in the world. Ye are of God. I am of God ye of god little children and have overcome them they come one way i have overcome them they come two ways i have overcome them they come from the dark i have overcome them they come in the day i have overcome them because 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 greater is seed that is in you than he that is in the world. Where is the overcomer? Where is the conqueror? You'll overcome in Jesus' name. Why don't you stand up and affirm that? Or stand up and confirm that the Lord has gone to prepare a place for you. Thank God you are going to be there. Thank God you are going to be there. We're talking about heaven and we're talking about those who are saved. We're talking about those who are born again. We're talking about those who are obedient. We're talking about those who are overcomers. And the grace of God is available for you tonight. You will overcome.